welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. So today is a very exciting vlog from preclinic and we actually placed our very first rubber dams. So our uh, preclinical operative dentistry professor told us, you know, to kind of expect to be disappointed because she knows that we're all kind of very type A. So she was basically telling us that, you know, we're gonna fail, we're probably gonna break it a bunch of times, we're probably gonna have to redo it, most of us are not gonna be able to get it on the first try. And so a lot of us walked in there having like very, very low expectations. So first I wanna go over what a rubber dam is. So a rubber dam is placed on a tooth or several teeth in order to provide isolation from several factors. So one is that it provides isolation to one of the biggest barriers to successful dental treatment, which is your saliva, your mucosa, and your tongue. As many of you know, moisture is a big barrier to materials curing properly. So it isolates the saliva, it isolates the tongue, and also makes it less likely that an injury may occur because when you're drilling, and especially on the mandible, you know, if your tongue is in the way or a patient like moves suddenly or moves their tongue into your field of where you're working, it can be very dangerous. And so the rubber dam is really good at preventing that. In dentistry, we use a lot of materials that not only may be, you know, dangerous if they get on your tongue or the gingiva around your teeth can not only be very dangerous, but they also don't taste really great. So in order to place a filling, we use what's called an acid etchant, which is literally, as it sounds, concentrated acid that is used to kind of roughen the surface of a tooth in order to make the composite stick to it a little bit better. And then also root canal therapy, we also use a sodium hypochlorite solution. And so if that gets in your mouth, that is very, very bitter and does not taste good. And obviously with acid etchant that I, uh, we use for composites, if it gets on any of the surfaces that it's not supposed to be on, it could uh, cause a burn because it is acid, it's a necessary part of the preparation and so you have to use it. And so that's why a rubber dam is a very important part of you know, bread and butter dentistry. And so because for most of us, it was our first time ever handling one, ever using the clamps and all of the instruments, it was kind of a very challenging time. The good thing is, is that our school kind of made it easy for us because instead of having us guess kind of where to place the holes for with the teeth, we actually have a stamp that kind of just puts dots in every quadrant so that we know where we would need to punch holes in order to uh, place on which tooth. And so for our assignment, because we're working on class ones right now, our instructors had us do an entire lower quadrant. And so it could be one half of the mandible because we'd be working on number 19 or the other half of the mandible if you're working on number 30. Um, obviously I just pointed in the wrong direction because number 30 is right here and number 19 is right here, but anyway. Um, you guys know what I mean. As you guys can see, I took a long time to actually get through and do this. It took me forever to even get the holes punched because not only do you have to punch the holes, you also have to adjust the size of the holes. Um, and so all of these things kind of contributed to it taking longer. Uh, normally, as our instructor told us, is that when you're actually practicing, for most people it takes a couple of minutes to actually get the rubber dam on and make sure that it's in between all the contacts. For me, it took a grand total of a whopping 18 minutes. But honestly, I was pretty proud of that because I didn't actually have to deal with a tear. I didn't have to start over and rip through the rubber dam when I was putting it on or when I was taking it off, which I think is really good. There were no pieces of rubber dam left in between the teeth and the contacts, which I thought was really good also. So I don't know, I was kind of pretty proud of my very first rubber dam, but it wasn't that it wasn't a struggle. I did have a pretty hard time doing it. And as you guys can see, it was taking me a while to even get all the instruments out. And then when I actually did take the clamp and started putting it on the tooth, I was kind of hesitating because obviously we're not working with a real patient. So I wasn't sure, was I too close to the gum line? Would that really hurt the patient if I had put it on that way on an actual person? There's so many questions you have to think about when putting on a rubber dam because the clamp does exert a lot of pressure, but it shouldn't be pinching. Obviously, I mean, the patient would be numb for whatever you're doing, but still, if it's pinching on the gums, that would probably be very uncomfortable. And so I was kind of second guessing that and making sure that nothing was going wrong. And then also because we have to put floss around the clamp, just in the case of the clamp breaking uh, or, or it accidentally popping off, it took me forever to actually get the floss all the way around uh, the top of the clamp. So that took a while as well. But overall, I would say I am pretty proud of my rubber dam. You guys can take a look at the end and let me know if any of you have done one. But I think that I had a pretty fun time doing it. I look forward to being able to drill with the rubber dam because hopefully it will help with the isolation. And then when we actually start doing the uh, restorations that it will help make sure that our fillings stay 
clean and dry and neat the way it's supposed to be.